this is Dr. Albert Schweitzer. These are the people to whom he has devoted his life in Gabon, a province in French Equatorial Africa. At the age of 11, I was fortunate enough in 1959 to meet him only once. But that one, that one meeting changed my entire life. Harold inspires people to do good work. And that's a great thing to say about someone. And these are just two people of millions who have dedicated their lives for the good of humanity. And his commitments to human well-being truly reflect those of his mentor and his role model, Dr. Albert Schweitzer, who he met at age 11. I hope he'll tell you more about that in Holland and who in the very big first meeting set the direction of his life of service to humanity. In honor of the 30th anniversary of Legacy International, President and Founder Mr. J. E. Rash presented Dr. Harold Robles with the Legacy Service to Humanity Award for his lifetime dedication of serving humanity. Read Service to Humanity Award presented to Dr. Harold Robles, 11th January 2010, Legacy International, strengthening civil societies worldwide since 79. Thank, Thank you. you so very much. Slowly we crept upstream. Where I sit today, I sat then, lost in thought, struggling to find the elementary conception of goodness, which I had not discovered in any philosophy. I covered sheet after sheet of paper with disconnected sentences, merely to keep myself concentrated on the problem. Late on the third day, while passing these very same three islands, there flashed upon my mind, unforeseen and unsought, the phrase, reverence for life. The iron door had yielded. The path in the thicket had become visible. There had been two great commandments given to me through the experiences of my childhood and youth. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt love mercy. Through these, I had found my way to the idea of reverence for life, in which world and life affirmation and ethics were contained side by side. Ladies and gentlemen, I have devoted most of my life trying to put into action the teachings of a man who spent more than 50 years practicing what he called reverence for life. The difference that this one individual has made on my life from the age of eight when I first heard about him up until today. So what I am, what I do, any decision that I make is made in the spirit of Albert Schweitzer. Don't get confused here. I'm not trying to be Albert Schweitzer. I'm not trying to mimic Albert Schweitzer, not in a million years. I'm just trying to live and, and, and promote my work in the spirit of his philosophy, reverence for life. More than 30 years ago, Dr. Robles founded the Albert Schweitzer Institute for the Humanities. More recently, he is the co-founder and president of the Medical Knowledge Institute, an international nonprofit healthcare education. Dr. Harold Robles has devoted his life promoting healthcare education as a human right. SoulTV.net takes a look back with Dr. Robles at the life and works of Dr. Albert Schweitzer and how it all began. Most of all, the meaning and practice of reverence for life. Reverence for life is a state of mind. It is not a dogma or a doctrine. It is a set of rules that each and everyone here can apply to his own, his or her own life. The only requirement is that it is done in deep awareness. Good is whatever promotes life. Evil is what destroys it. From there, you make your own decision.
Living and working in French Equatorial Africa, Dr. Schweitzer has given new meaning to the words, practice what you preach. In this long lost Academy Award winning documentary, the camera follows the good doctor around his hospital in the jungle to his place of birth in Germany. Dr. Albert Schweitzer had one condition though, the documentary was not to appear during his lifetime. In the third class compartment on a train rolling through the Munster Valley after a long journey across France, Dr. Schweitzer returns to Gunsbach. His work in Africa has made him world famous, but at the station he will be greeted by only a handful of friends. Be no fanfare. To the local people, he is Monsieur Albert, one of their own, and like them, one who prefers to come and go quietly. Alone, he steps to the platform wearing an old fashioned black suit and a hat 40 years old. He looks after his own luggage and helps load it on a cart. A train man asked him why he rode on the hard benches of a third-class compartment. Schweitzer's answer was that he rode third because there is no fourth class anymore. To the shy as well as to the bold, the doctor extends his hand until at last, with two members of his hospital staff who have arrived in Gunsbach before him, he begins the 10-minute walk from the station through the village to his ivy-covered house. For most men, the scenes of their boyhood have been retouched by modern times. But the village where Dr. Schweitzer's roots are is not much changed in 80 years. His house, built in 1927, is very nearly the latest in Gunsbach. 